The Trails and Tales update is here and it brings a whole new host of blocks, mobs, and challenges to Minecraft. And I'm personally challenging myself to see what I can accomplish in 100 days of Minecraft and I'm setting some goals. During these 100 days, I'd like to beat the Ender Dragon, get an Elytra, build a cool base with the new blocks, and fully trim my armor. I can't wait another minute, so let's start. On day one, I loaded in and I just took in this beautiful spawn area. Then, like any other Minecraft world, it was time to punch a tree. I got some essentials sorted, and then I amazed myself with my incredible parkour skills as I was able to make a one block jump. I mined some stone and grabbed a new pickaxe. I found so many exposed resources at the top of the mountain, like this iron and some coal, so I set out to gather as much as I possibly could. After all that mining, I decided to start exploring the meadow and maybe head over to the village to get some gear for the nighttime. I found a couple of beehives and a pink sheep, and I was actually super excited about that. I headed into the village to look for some food and I immediately stole this bed. There were some trees growing in the street for them, so I thought I'd be helpful and take them down, but secretly I just wanted the wood. Someone left all their stuff in this chest, so I just took it. And I grabbed their stone cutter. I hope they don't mind. And then I found where they were stashing all their hay bales and I took them all. I used the hay to make some bread for myself. And then I finally got to eat something around all these stinky villagers. And to end out the first day, I made some oak fences and lured the beautiful pink sheep over to where I was going to set up my base. And once they were fully fenced in, I started smelting all my iron and placed my bed to sleep through the first night in Minecraft. On the morning of day two, I grabbed some iron out of the furnace to make a bucket chop some villagers inside their houses, and grab some water so I can make an infinite source over near my camp. I used some of my iron to make some armor, and then I made a shield, because I figured I could go caving to get some diamonds, and a shield would probably be necessary. One of my goals in this series was to beat the ender dragon as fast as I possibly could, so I knew I was going to need to get some diamond armor to go into the nether. I mined up a bunch of this dripstone as I thought maybe I could use it later to make an infinite fuel source, and I descended deeper into the caves where I fought my first mob, which was a skeleton. I used some iron that I found in the cave to make an iron pickaxe. As I went deeper, I got tag teamed by a skeleton and a spider and they almost killed me. I got down to four hearts. Maybe I should add not dying to my list of goals. I found a little opening to a deeper cave and when I was looking around, I saw some resources in the wall. So I figured it would be a good place to look for diamonds. And I made myself a little staircase down so that I could quickly run out if I had to. Then I started to explore the cave and I saw a ton of mobs, but I spotted some diamonds in the ceiling. And of course, I got attacked by a horde of zombies and a creeper. And the creeper just decided to take care of himself. After a few more fights with some mobs, I was able to tower up and finally claim the diamonds that were in the ceiling. And this is your reminder to keep mining if you think there's only one, because there might be more hidden. I got a little bit nervous because I saw that there was deep dark everywhere, but we only had three diamonds, so that was definitely not enough for diamond armor. And against my better judgment, I started to sneak into this area that had a bunch of different skulk blocks. The only hostile mob that spawns in the deep dark biome is actually the warden, so I thought it would be safer to quickly check for some diamonds. And it wouldn't be a froggy adventure if it wasn't filled with imminent danger. And I told myself, no, 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 we're not going over there. But then I remember that sometimes you can find diamond armor hidden in the chest, so of course now I have to go. When I was sneaking over to the city, I saw some more diamonds, but of course they are right over a pile of lava. And I used some of the iron that I mined earlier to make a pair of shears so I could collect all of this wool. Day 3 started with me noticing a chest. I snuck up the ladder to see if it would be safe, and since I saw no shrieker, I decided to go for it. I didn't find any armor, but I did find a mending efficiency for Ho. And after dropping some stuff that I didn't need in the chest, I decided to move on. I tried to sneak as much as I could in the F5 view so I could see any shriekers that might have been hiding. I accidentally set off a shrieker because I thought that there weren't any around. So I rushed over to where the scream was coming from to destroy it before it could go off again. Inside the chest, there were some enchanted iron leggings and some echo shards. But inside the other chest, there were actually mending protection for unbreaking three leggings. They are basically perfect. I immediately took off those iron leggings and put on those perfect diamond leggings. And then I threw the old ones away because I didn't need them anymore. The next few chests didn't have that much in them. I got some echo shards and some bones and some more bones and a name tag. And the next chest was basically just echo shards and books. I was looting on autopilot and I didn't even realize that there was an enchanted book in here and it's looting three. I remember in this moment thinking to myself, oh wow, that's a lot of shriekers. I really am glad I didn't set any of those off. And then I walked right into the fire. 
And I just noped out of there as fast as I possibly could. But some of the chests just had some okay stuff. And whenever possible, I was destroying any troopers I could because they weren't going to stop me from stealing. Some of the loot that we found was actually pretty useful, like the Sharpness 3 book. And even though it's not what we were looking for, we did find Swift Sneak 3. At the end of day 3, I made a misstep and I set off another Shrieker. That meant that if I set off one more, the Warden would be coming, so I decided to leave. As I left on day 4, I realized that I hadn't gotten that much armor from the ancient city. But on the way out, I found some more diamonds and it gave me an idea. If I could get enough iron to make an anvil, I could make a diamond sword and add Looting 3 to it. And this would mean that hopefully with Looting 3, fighting the Blaze and the Enderman in the Nether would go a lot faster. I had to throw away my axe in the ancient city, so then I had to punch this zombie to death. Oh, this might call for backup? Come on! Oh my gosh, not again. Come on! On the way back up to the upper cavern, I got chased by so many skeletons and I really thought that this was going to be my first death in this world. At this point, I wasn't sure if I had enough iron for an anvil, so I saw a little bit more and I grabbed all of it. And even though some spiders decided to start chasing me, I made it back to my bed in time to sleep through the night and escape the spiders. On day five, I started smelting up my iron. I also crafted my first ever recovery compass and I used some of my diamonds to make a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. While my iron was smelting, I decided to leave the valley so I could see what other kinds of biomes were around and also perhaps find an exposed lava pool. And this trip mostly concerned of making sure that I wasn't falling into any powdered snow. When I got to the other side of the mountains, I was amazed by all of this world gen that I was seeing. And when I looked closer, I happened to notice that there was a flower forest nearby. On the way to the flower forest, I noticed some pink leaves in my screen and I got so excited. This was actually perfect as I wanted to use some of the new blocks in my base. My luck increased in this world as I found an exposed lava pool on the way to the cherry tree. And then I set about the long task of mining up some obsidian. I used my last diamonds to craft an ax, which I then used to grab some of this beautiful cherry wood. And that sound is so nice. After I grabbed a couple of saplings, I decided to move on to the flower forest. But first I had to make an epic water bucket clutch. Well, at least it was epic for me. I collected a bunch of different flowers, and then I noticed at the edge of the flower forest across the river there was some sugar cane. And wanting to avoid skeletons gave me an opportunity to make a pink boat, so of course I took it. And I slept once again to protect my pink sheep from all the monsters. On the morning of day 6, I finally had enough iron to make an anvil, and I planted my two lonely sugar cane. I crafted up some iron boots, and then I added looting 3 and sharpness 3 to my sword. I checked for swift sneak, but I didn't have enough XP. And even after I used all my bottles of enchanting, I was still a little bit short. I planted some of my new cherry saplings and then I prepared to go to the nether. I didn't want anything coming out and hurting my pink sheep. So I built it over on the side of the mountain. And then I noticed that there was an enderman in this cave. I trapped him in my boat and then I scored my first ender pearl. I noticed another little cave. So I decided to check it out. And I actually found a spawner in here. I would have preferred a skelly spawner, but I guess a zombie spawner is always welcome, and in the chest there were two golden apples. And then I finally had to stop procrastinating and actually tackle the nether. I spent the rest of day 6 all the way to day 8 in the nether. My first goal was to find a nether fortress. The crimson forest sucks, so I decided to mine into the wall to avoid hoglins. This went on for a super long time and I even broke my iron pickaxe. Eventually I started to mine down and I actually found out that I was super high up in the air, but I was over another fortress. And I guess sometimes you just have to jump. As soon as I jumped down in the fortress, I started looking for a blaze spawner. And genuinely, I think this may be the luckiest Minecraft world I've ever had as I immediately found a double spawner. After I made the area a little bit safer, it was time to kill some blazes. And honestly, I kept forgetting that I was in iron armor and there were a couple times where things got a little bit sketchy and I had to eat a golden apple. After I had enough blaze rods, I quickly grabbed some nether wart and I fought a wither skeleton that actually gave me a skull, but it fell into the lava. 07 legend. After that, I bridged around looking for a warped forest. While walking around, I accidentally ran back into my portal, but then after what felt like an hour, I finally found one. The rest of my time in the nether pretty much just became this.
Oh, hey, dude. I don't want to hit you. Okay, bye. When I finally made it back home, I went over to the base camp and I started to get my inventory ready for the Ender Dragon. I had luckily already found a bow, but I only had two arrows. So with the last bits of day eight left, I grabbed some flint, crafted a fletching table, chopped some logs, and I traded with a new fletcher. Getting some emeralds allowed me to buy some arrows from him. And I sorted my inventory one last time before I slept the day away into day nine. The very first thing I did on day nine was throw my first eye of Ender. Some of the views I had while I was following the eyes of Ender were incredible. And there I was just appreciating nature, not trying to distract myself from the fact that I was pretty nervous. I was in mostly iron and unenchanted armor. And while I've done the dragon before, it definitely just gave me a little bit of pause. Along the way, I fought some creepers to get some gunpowder, and I picked up some sugarcane as well. This way, after the dragon, we could easily get a couple of rockets just in case we needed to fly around the end. And as night became morning on day 10, I threw my ender eye and it went straight down. I dug a pretty simple staircase going downwards. And before I knew it, I was finding the stone bricks that meant we were going to be in the stronghold. After exploring around a little bit, I found a stronghold library and I found my world's first armor trim and some enchanted books. There was another armor trim upstairs too. I made sure to drop some of the stuff I wouldn't need for the fight in the chest and I would come back for it after. This actually might be the luckiest seed of all time as I found another library with an incredible enchanted book. And with the final trim from upstairs, I actually had enough templates to make a full set of armor. But that would have to wait as it was time to do what I came here to do. All right, let's kill a dragon. Oh no, oh gosh. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, no, 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 I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. <gasps> what? In this moment, I was so happy I could not stop smiling. I had set out on a goal to defeat the Ender Dragon as fast as I could. And in only 10 in-game days, I had done it. But our journey in the end was not complete. And genuinely, at this point, someone might need to check my PC for hacks. There's no way, bro. And the rest of day 10 ended with me bridging over to the other islands and finding not one, but two extra end cities. And one of them had an extra ship as well. Days 11 and 12, I spent looting the end cities. And of course, I immediately lost the dragon head. But I snuck onto the ship, looted their potions, killed their shulker, and of course, grabbed the elytra. Having the elytra meant that we had two goals done in this world, and now it was time to loot. Oh no, this is getting a little sketchy, I think. Day 13 started with me jumping back through the portal with an inventory full of loot. Being back in the meadow crater made me realize that I forgot to set my spawn before I fought the dragon. I crafted up an extra couple of rockets and then headed back towards the stronghold. And I grabbed all the stuff that I'd stashed away there, jumped back into the end, and went back home just in time for day 13 to be over. Day 14 was a much more chill day where I organized all of the things that I'd gotten from the end cities, and then I went down into the caves to collect some lapis and I found some bonus diamonds, so I still touched them. I needed to get an enchantment set up going before I lost my 68 levels. I also mined up a bit of an iron vein that I found with silk touch. I genuinely had forgotten that I had iron from the end cities. When I got back to the surface, I fought creepers until morning. On day 15, I used some of the iron for my shulkers to make some cauldrons. And then with a little bit of dripstone and some pointed dripstone and the magic of trapdoors, I now had a working lava farm. The wandering trader stopped by, so I bought his gunpowder. Then I spent the rest of my day sitting on my enchantment table underneath the cherry blossom tree and trying to harness the magic of the falling petals to give me good enchantments. And at the end of the day, I had a pretty good silk touch pickaxe and I was able to combine two fortune pickaxe into a fortune three. And to switch it up, I went to sleep on top of my chest. On the morning of day 16, I started a little sugarcane farm. And while I was chopping some spruce wood, I started to consider my options. I had completed two goals on my list already, but I still had 84 days left. I wanted to build a pretty cool base, but to go and gather a ton of resources, I was going to need to get mending and unbreaking for my elytra. 
I crafted a lectern and I started trading with this villager, but he wouldn't give me anything that I wanted. And then he started running away, so I packed it up for the night and headed back to my camp to think about the palette I was going to use for my base. I went through my shulkers and my chest and I placed down all the blocks that looked like they sort of went together, and for now, that would be a good start. I crafted up some lecterns and flew over to the village to do some more trading where I found this guy stuck on one of the market stalls. I started rolling this villager trying to get mending or unbreaking, and then somehow this other guy was also up here, so now I had two villagers to roll. I was pretty lucky to get mending early on for pretty cheap, but I still needed to get unbreaking three and I had the worst time trying to get it. Eventually I settled on unbreaking two because I could stack them in an anvil and the rest of the time I spent hunting creepers for gunpowder. I was trying to use the nights to my advantage as much as I possibly could because I didn't want to make a full creeper farm for this 100 days challenge. While flying around I noticed that my village was getting zombie raided so I decided to jump in and help save the stinky villagers as I had no idea where the iron golem was. I couldn't risk losing mending and unbreaking already, I hadn't even trapped them in their houses. And the rest of the night I just continued to hunt creepers until it was finally daytime. On day 18 I combined my unbreaking books and I put mending and unbreaking on my elytra. I decided to take advantage of the bees nests that were right near my base area and I started a little crop farm. Our cauldron had lava in it so I expanded the lava farm. And then for some reason I decided to make it my life's mission to get this donkey to love me. After I finally tamed him, I gave him a saddle and then I decided to name him Strawberry. I hooked Strawberry to the fence post so that hopefully they could tell me what blocks I was missing in my palette. But I think they were just hungry. After that, I decided to take a break and repair my elytra by mining some quartz in the nether. And this is definitely the most underrated feature of 120. It's so OP that you can just put your elytra on from your hotbar. Back in the overworld, I realized I only had 10 pieces of wheat left and I needed to get some food. I decided to steal some cows from the villagers. But this turned out to be a disaster as I was fighting some creepers and a creeper exploded on the cow. Day 19 I was much more successful with my cow kidnapping. And for now the cows were just gonna have to stay in a little hole near my base. Sorry. I realized that dark oak might look good with this palette. So I set off in the direction of the end portal as I'd seen a forest there before and I wanted to get saplings. I picked up some more bamboo when I was done. And then I think I got lost because I was at the shipwreck and not the mountain, I don't know. And out of nowhere there was a trident round attacking me. After taking him out and he didn't drop a trident, I found the coast armor trim in the chest. And on the way back home I found a moss block in a chest as well, so I took it. I also found a gigantic stony peaks biome and it had a bunch of calcite on top of the mountain. I slept there under the stars and I spent pretty much my whole morning of day 20 mining calcite. After I had like 12 stacks from this one vein, I went back to the base and I added it to the block lineup. And seeing it there gave me a really good idea. I jumped into the caves and I maneuvered with my elytra down so that I could just keep floating and made it nearly all the way to the ancient city. I remember seeing this geode in the walls when we first looted here and I decided to take the opportunity to mine up a bunch of the amethyst to use for the build. On the way out, I also grabbed some amethyst shards. And while hunting creepers at night, I saw a unique opportunity to capture a zombie villager. I got him trapped in a boat, built a little bit of a sun shelter for him, and then headed towards some sand so I could smelt some into glass. Day 21 started with me brewing some weakness potions, and once they were made into splash potions, I took them over to the villager and I let him have it. I added amethyst to our block lineup and I really liked how it was all coming together. See, I even did a dance. I planted some bamboo, and I made a smithing table just to look at all the different combinations that I could make, but I didn't want to commit to anything just yet. The rest of the day I spent chopping trees, and once the villager was cured, I decided to leave him for one more night so that he could be zombified and I could cure him once again. And while I waited for nighttime to come back, I just continued chopping. Once he was zombified once again, I gave him the old razzle dazzle, and then for his safety, I slept. On day 22, I dug out a little safety hole for the villager. On the villager's little bunker, I installed an iron door to keep the zombies out. Once he was cured, he escaped his boat and was wandering all over the place and it took me all day to be able to get him into his hidey hole. I traded with the villager to level him up and unlock the one emerald for one glass pane trade. I crafted up some torches and I started lighting up the area around me so that not as many mobs would spawn. And when I was done there was a thunderstorm so I rushed into the villager hidey hole and took my bed back. On the morning of day 23, I felt like something was missing from our block palette, and seeing our pink sheep gave me some ideas. After adding white wool, I felt like this was finally a palette that we could really work with. To celebrate, I did some chill farming since most of our crops were already grown. Thanks, bees! 
I chopped down some spruce logs so that I could make some spruce fences. And then I cleared out an area so that I could make a little sheep pen. I made a new pink bed for myself and then I took a nap under the stars in my pink bed. Now that I had an idea of the blocks that I wanted to use for building, I spent all of days 24 and 25 chopping down trees and gathering materials. Behind the mini cherry grove I planted I realized was the perfect spot that I could start to build my base. But it couldn't just be any base, I mean this world was coming out pretty epically. I mean look at all I've accomplished already in 25 days. I'd never had a Minecraft world that had gone this way so far, so I really wanted to make it special. So I dug up dirt and then placed it back down until I had a big open area to work with at the end of day 25. On day 26 I fed the cows again and decided to head to the stronghold. On the way there I spotted a jungle temple from the air, so I took a zombie out and then I looted the chest and it had a wild armor trim in it. There was a zombie in all gold armor, that was cool. And then I took their sticky pistons and looted the other chest. The rest of days 26 and all of day 27 I spent in the end tearing down an end city. I've actually never had the opportunity to use purper in one of my starter bases before. And luckily for me it fits in really well with the palette that we're going for. I gathered up like 8 stacks of purper. And while I was here and had the extra rockets, I headed off in search of another end city because I wanted to find the spire armor trim. After looting the two chests, I quickly made my way to the next end city within my render distance. And in this one, I found what I was looking for. I spotted a few more, so I looted some more chests. And I even claimed another elytra before I did a little dance and headed home. On the morning of day 28, I tested out some new armor trims and I really like the spire one. But I still can't make a decision, so we're gonna put that off till later. The rest of the day I spent trading with my villager for XP. And he actually got a trade for pink and purple banners, which was perfect because those were the colors I was going to be using for my base. I placed all the iron that I mined earlier, and then used my fortune 3 pick to mine it all up. And then I grabbed my first bucket of lava from the lava farm to actually smelt the iron in my furnace. When I had enough XP, I combined my swords. I traded for a couple of mending books, and then I put mending on my helmet and my boots. On day 29, I just farmed wood. Literally. I was gonna need a ton of cherry logs, and of course, cherry leaves as well, but also some other materials like birch and some classic oak logs. And at the end of the day, I had quite some materials gathered. On day 30, I headed out in search of a mesa, and while flying over the ocean, I kept an eye out for shipwrecks and also for ruins. In my travels, I found a mushroom biome, so I landed on it, and then I found a geode collided with a ruin. I first went to the sunken ship and I scored a new armor trim, and I plopped out my ender chest to grab my brush, and then I grabbed the door so I could use it as an air pocket. And once I was in my air pocket, I used my brush to brush away my first suspicious sand. It was a piece of wheat. Wait, no sniffer egg for me? Behind that tiny island, there was a huge mushroom island, and the lushness of the azalea trees on the top caught my eye, and I pretty much spent the entire night digging up rooted dirt. I also mined a few stacks of diorite, and I popped into the lush cave below to grab some spore blossoms. The next morning I flew up and out of the hole, and I continued on my search for sniffers. I mean badlands! I was getting pretty unlucky by brushing the suspicious sand, but then finally I found my first pottery shard. When I started getting towards some warm biomes, I just kept following the coast. And then I finally saw the badlands as I was coming out of a shipwreck, and I was so excited! On my way over to the mesa, I saw a desert temple sunk into the ground. I carefully made my way in and placed torches absolutely everywhere. And I saw some more sus sand on the ground, so I had to start brushing again. Excavating these ruins is so fun. And you can get some really interesting and useful things out of the sand. And sometimes it just feels like it's trolling you. And the only real good loot at the bottom of the pyramid was the dune armor trim. I saw a desert village with an exposed cave spider spawner. But I was really just here to see the camel. Oh, isn't he cute? At some point I knew I was going to have to get this guy back to my base. But I don't think he liked me very much. He like growled at me. So to deal with my sadness, I went to the mesa and I watched the sunset as I mined stacks of terracotta. And after I had five stacks, I headed home. But of course along the way I stopped at any ruins that I found and mined away all the suspicious sand or gravel. And I got the same shirt, but I was hoping that it would mean that I would get a sniffer soon.
After what felt like forever, I finally saw a sniffer egg and I was so excited. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Back home, I ended up day 34 by getting some pink dye and dyeing my terracotta pink and then smelting it into glazed terracotta. I also organized and dyed my shulkers so I could easier keep track of which ones had materials for the build. I moved all of my treasure to my ender chest and then finally slept the night away on top of the spruce tree. Days 35 and 36 were more resource gathering days. I stripped spruce, collected some bamboo, and converted that bamboo into blocks and planks and then trap doors. I sheared my sheep a bunch, and then I went into the nether to collect stripped crimson logs. After gathering seven stacks of crimson wood, I went to the nether fortress and started to mine some of the nether bricks. And I ended out day 36 at home, chopping more oak logs. Day 37 was another slow day where I chopped spruce, crafted up some scaffolding, and flew over to the village to grab some more mending books. I never had tools that were this good this early, so I wanted to keep them repaired when possible. Luckily, now that we had mending on them, it wouldn't be a problem anymore. And then I ended out my day by crafting up a few random things I was going to need for the build. On day 38, I actually just had some question marks in my notes, so I guess I just crafted up some cherry fence gates that day. I spent all of days 39 and 40 building a platform for the base to sit on top of. And I don't know why, but I thought it was only going to take like three stacks of dirt to fill that whole platform, so I had to stop and grab more dirt. It was looking a little bit empty. I decided to big brain this and actually just grab silk touch, which took me most of day 41 to get. And once it was on my shovel, I mined dirt. Day 42 was more of the same where I was placing dirt on the platform and then when I was running out, I was mining more up. I repeated this process until the platform was complete and I finished out day 42 by installing some fence gates between the posts. On day 43, I laid out an outline of calcite and cherry planks in the shape of what would be our new fort. I was so ready to get building right then and there, but I still had a couple of things to do. I set up a new workstation and then I detailed the railing that we built earlier. And at the end, I was super happy with how it all looked together. Then I finished out the day mining up some extra diorite. Days 44 to 55, I spent building up the most magical pink and purple fortress of my dreams. The base of the fort was actually made of diorite, calcite, white wool, and a little bit of birch logs. And for the roofs, I used a mixture of amethyst, purple, sometimes pink concrete powder, and of course, cherry wood. Seeing this base come to life over the hours that I spent building was so worth it. And of course I had to give myself a ton of storage room so I could actually empty out my shulkers and my chest monster. And to be honest, I think that bamboo might be my new favorite trapdoor. And after I did a ton of detailing, I was finally finished with the base. And here's how it came out with shaders on. Honestly, I absolutely love this base. It is so cozy and lush to walk through. However, as pretty as it is, we still have a problem. Besides the walls and the details, the base was empty. And I had run out of cherry petals. So I spent most of day 56 grabbing some more cherry petals from the hill, grabbing some pumpkins from nearby, and moving my enchanting setup. I spread some more of the petals inside the base, and finished moving my enchantment setup upstairs. And then I slept my first night in the new base. I spent a little bit of time on day 57 admiring the chandelier, and then I started to set up a new workstation room. I filled in the roof, and then I added some overhead lighting. I made sure to add plenty of little details to finish off this room. And it came out super cute! Next, I started to work on a storage room using a combination of chests and barrels. But I was rudely interrupted by some thunder, so I headed to sleep as I didn't have any lightning rods around. On the morning of day 58, I finished up the little storage area. I added lots of details like plants and cozy leaves everywhere. And then I hung my first hanging signs with text outside, and of course I did the back as well. I also made some chiseled bookshelves for the enchanting area, and filled them with my enchanted books. I didn't know what made that sound, that's so nice! And the last thing I did that day was use a decorative pot with a flower pot inside of it to make a little cherry blossom plant. And then on day 59, I started to speed run a bedroom. I made sure to give myself some space for plants, chests, some privacy, and of course, some books. I even had time to listen to a jam. And then I spent the rest of day 59 making a little garden out in front by the staircase. 
Days 60 and 61, I pretty much just spent organizing all of my shulkers and all of my chests. After so many Minecraft days of just having stuff thrown everywhere, it was nice to finally have everything in its own place. And yep, I got the base camp chest too. On day 62, I added some paintings around the base. And oh my gosh, look at this one that goes to my workshop. Isn't that so cute? And then I hung up a map of our area and actually our base looks so small. I wanted to find some glow squid ink for some glowing item frames and I remembered that there was some water in this cave over by the nether portal. I usually find tons of glow squids hanging out in these like waterfalls. But as I was going down, I noticed the skulk and there were a ton of mobs here. I picked up some glow ink and then it actually hit me that we were right near an ancient city. I couldn't tell if this was the one that we'd already been to or not. So I decided to check the chest and I hadn't looted this yet. So I spent the rest of day 62 into day 63 looting the ancient city. I also found a huge vein of diamonds that was going to come in super clutch later on. I did, however, make a few mistakes along the way and I accidentally ended up summoning two wardens. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh, this is really not good, actually. Oh, no! Run, 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 run. Oh, my gosh, I can't see anything. Hello? Oh, no, no way. No way. I sat there in the darkness, deciding to immediately run as soon as my vision came back. I was so happy to see regular stone cave when I was leaving. And to end out the day, I just checked what the ward armor trim looked like. Not my favorite. On day 64, I needed some soul sand to build an XP farm, so I went into the nether. I absolutely girl bossed these two gas. I was so excited about this. And I collected a bunch of soul sand while I was here in case I needed it in the future. Back in the overworld, I realized I already had soul sand. And I briefly wondered why I even built a chest room if I wasn't going to use it. I went over and excavated the zombie spawner that we found earlier. On day 65, I finished up the farm. And then I tested it out on day 66. And I spent the rest of my day standing there repairing my tools. I forgot that I wasn't recording on the morning of day 67, but I built up a little puppy shelter for my dog. I planted some more cherry saplings outside, and then I worked on connecting the pathways to the front door. I filled in the pathway with a combination of rooted dirt and coarse dirt, and then I still had this big open area to work with. So I grabbed my pottery shirts and I crafted up some pots. I placed them outside with some pots inside of them, then used a combination of saplings and leaves to make them pretty. I added some rooted dirt around the pots to break up the way that the ground looked. And then after I added some pink petals to the ground as well, I was finally happy with how it looked. That night I hunted creepers for gunpowder as I was going on an adventure in the morning, but it honestly felt like the mobs were hunting me. It was a really rough night. That morning after I crafted some rockets, I set out on my adventure. I wanted to find some more ruins so that we could get another sniffer egg. Once I found a ruin, I took out the drowned. And then we got so lucky with our first suspicious sand having a sniffer egg in it. Let's go! I had a sniffer egg, but I wasn't satisfied. I wanted to look for a trail ruin if I could find one. And I even saw some promising biomes, but I couldn't find what I was looking for. And when I was about to give up and go home, I saw a little bit of terracotta in the corner of my eye. I immediately got to work brushing and mining the blocks to find all of the secrets that this trail ruin had to offer. And when I made it back home, I had a new armor trim and a new music just to try out. Oh, I like it. Oh, it's such a bop. On the morning of day 69, I started clearing out a space so I could raise my sniffers. I mossed the terrain and then I placed my sniffer eggs down on the moss. And then I made a beautiful bamboo fence to go around them. While I waited for the eggs to hatch, I harvested some more cherry wood and of course made sure to check on my eggs whenever possible. I even saw a crackle on one of the eggs and then on the other. At that point, I was too excited to do anything else, so I just made a boat to watch them hatch. Welcome to the world! 
On day 70, I had some time to kill waiting for the sniffers to grow up. But I realized that we were actually getting close to the end of the 100 days and my base didn't feel quite finished. I went to the village and bought a silk touch book and two more unbreaking two books. And I put it all together in the anvil so now I have a tool that can collect leaves really easily. I needed these leaves because I was thinking about making a custom cherry tree out in front of my base. There were supposed to be some cherry trapdoors on the railing of the staircase up to the base so I quickly took care of that as well. On day 71 I spent my entire day building up a custom cherry tree out in front of my base. After adding some flowers on the morning of day 72 this area was now complete. While killing some mobs, I saw an opportunity to get a music disc and I actually got Chirp, which is one of my favorite discs in the entire game. I planted some flowers for my sniffers. I headed into the nether to collect some shroom lights. And then back in the overworld, I planted them near my base, hiding them under moss carpets. And when that was all said and done, I finally felt like my base was completed and I had another goal checked off my list. On day 73, I was pretty shocked to see that my sniffers had grown up and they'd already dug up a seed. Then one of the sniffers did a big sniff and he threw himself on the ground to actually start sniffing more. Oh, he's doing a thing! Now that I had a pitcher pot and a torch flower seed, I had the best idea to start a little farm on the right side of my base and plant those two plants there. And in the future, we could put even more in this little patch. On day 74, I was just hanging out with my sniffers, waiting for them to sniff up more torch flower seeds so that I could breed them. I also worked on a pathway into the meadow valley and smoothed out this area so I could connect it all together. And when I was all done, it looked so much better. And last year before I went to sleep, I bred up my sniffers and then I placed their egg on the moss to grow up. On day 75, I went into the nether because I was still missing a few armor trims and that was the last thing I needed to do was trim my armor. I found the rib armor trim in the first chest I looted and then I set off to look for a bastion to at least find either the snout trim or the netherite upgrade template. I finally found one several rockets later and then attempted to loot. I think I'm pretty used to netherite and protection 4 armor because I really forgot that I did not have full protection 4 and that almost killed me. I cheesed the piglin brutes pretty easily and then finally looted my first chest which didn't have much. I spent the rest of day 75 and half of day 76 looting this bastion. I fought off so many different piglins and I stole some of their gold. And all of the other chests I didn't get lucky in either, although I did find some ancient debris and pig step. But hey, free lodestone! When I got back to my base, I was so happy to see that the baby sniffer had hatched! But I had no time to waste and I spent the rest of day 76 caving for diamonds. We were going to need a lot of diamonds as armor trims are pretty expensive to duplicate. And truthfully, we only had one that had enough copies to fully trim our armor and still have some left over. I found a bunch of diamonds in this deep dark cave, but I started getting sketched out when mobs were following me, so I decided to strip mine for a while just to try to avoid as many mobs as I could. It felt like a worthy endeavor as I was finding a lot of diamonds while I was strip mining. Eventually I mined into a cave that had a bunch of deep dark. I decided to explore to see if there were any more diamonds, and wouldn't my luck have it that it opened up to another ancient city. A quick glance into one of the chests meant I hadn't looted it before, so I think that this was now the third ancient city that I found in 100 days. While accidentally setting off a shrieker, I found the most rare armor trim in the 120 update, so I strip mined out of there as fast as I could. Eventually I came into an opening that had a lush cave in it, so I decided to explore for more diamonds and collect some slime. I mined up some diamonds that I found near the lush cave, and fought off hordes of mobs, especially the creepers, making sure to collect all the gunpowder. After finding arguably the most rare item in the game, I was feeling invigorated and ready to go back into the nether. So I spent the rest of day 77 and day 78 mining diamonds and of course fighting off lots of mobs. When I got home on day 78, I saw that my sniffers had sniffed up some more torch flower seeds, so I bred them again. And then I placed up and fortuned up all of my diamonds so that I could know exactly how many armor trims that I'd be able to make. When we had them all fortuned, we had just over a stack. I then spent the evening of day 78 into the morning of day 79 getting some XP from the zombie farm. I stayed there swiping zombies until I finally had enough XP to hit level 30. I enchanted a bow to take to the nether with me, and then I put the books on it that we found in the ancient city earlier, which were Infinity and Unbreaking 2. 
And as night settled in on day 79, I was off into the nether to hopefully find another bastion. I finally found one on day 80 and I felt a lot more confident with my new bow. But unluckily for me, there was only one chest in this bastion. And it didn't have an armor trim or a netherite upgrade template. So I flew off again, searching for another bastion. I felt like I was going so far with no luck in finding another one. Until finally I saw another one. I took advantage of my bow and kept my distance while I took out all of the piglins and all the piglin brutes. And then when I finally checked the chest, the fruit wasn't that great. I saw another part of the bastion sunken into the basalt delta, so I decided to go investigate. And it was in this chest that I finally found what I was looking for. There was one more chest that I decided to go for in the center, and I immediately towered up as there was a piglin chasing me, and then killed him with my bow. The chest was kind of mediocre, and I was really hoping for another right upgrade template, but I guess at least it had a bunch of golden carrots. Getting home on day 80, there were some unexpected guests in my sniffer pen, and this gave me an idea. I decided to go for an adventure to look for pillager outposts. And I spent the rest of day 80 all the way to day 83 flying around my world looking for them. I saw some absolutely beautiful biomes on my journey. And I even stopped at a meadow village to pick a few flowers. But as far as armor trims went, I was having no luck. I was flying all over my world and all I was finding was goat horns. It was getting to the point where I was actually having to pick up sugarcane and fight creepers to make more rockets. And still, I was having no luck. I'd used all my rockets and I was wandering around the desert on foot trying to kill creepers just to get enough to make some more rockets. I looted a desert pyramid hoping that it would have a bunch of gunpowder for me. It didn't have that much though and I was able to craft a few rockets from hunting creepers so I moved on. And this next pillager outpost also just brought me nothing except for a really terrible goat horn. I visited another desert pyramid hoping to get even more gunpowder and luck was really on my side this time as I was able to get a ton of gunpowder. At this point I was losing hope though because I was 8,000 blocks away from my base and I wasn't able to find a pillager outpost that had the armor trim. I was getting so sad at this point so I decided to turn back towards home, even stopping to gather more sugar cane for the long road ahead. And on the way there I found one more pillager outpost. And it had the trim! Oh my goodness, what a journey that was! And when I finally made it back, I immediately went to the XP farm to repair my elytra, and then checked on my little sniffer family, and I finished out my day by moving my pink sheep and this beehive into my base. And when I was done sorting my loot, it was dark and it was time to finally sleep so the phantoms would leave me alone. Days 84 and 85 were actually some chill days where I just hung out with my sniffers and bred them. And while I was waiting for them to dig up seeds, I actually started on the outline for a little flower field that I was going to put on the side of my base. And then once the outline was in place, I dug up all of the grass and I replaced the grass with forester and rooted dirt. Then I added in lines of alliums going in a pattern for this specific field. And by the end of the two days, my sniffer family had grown considerably. And the last thing that I did on day 85 was add some tulips in the courtyard. That way the bees would be happy. And here's how the flower field came out. I realized I forgot to record showing it, but I did have a replay recording of it. So here it is. I was still missing a few armor trims. So between days 86 and 89, I got jump scared by some creepers while revisiting the old trail ruin that I'd already looted. I'd left this place before because I ran out of storage space in my shoulder boxes, so there was still a ton left to excavate. I was still missing three of the different trims that you could get from the trail ruins, but getting them was going to be more luck than I expected. And I've gotta say, after playing with it for these 100 days, I really really love this mechanic. Mojang did just such a great job with adding the suspicious gravel and having the brushing mechanic. It is so fun to find something cool. Unless you're me. I only find wheat and blue dye. By the time I'd finished excavating, I found two new trims, and now I only needed the Wayfinder one. But there were also other armor trims that I didn't have. So I crafted up a bunch of spruce doors, and I set off in search of an ocean monument. The Elder Guardians, when they're alive, give you mining fatigue, so I knew I wouldn't be able to mine blocks to make safe places for myself. Instead, I used doors to have a little air pocket and to break line of sight. 
I've only ever raided ocean monuments before with potions of invis and potions of water breathing, so doing this with none of that was terrifying. And unfortunately at the end when I actually killed the guardian, he didn't drop the trim. They only have a 20% chance to drop. And I was getting a little bit scared, so I decided to get out of there. As I still had a hard decision to make, how was I actually going to trim my armor? I was only missing the Vex armor trim, the Tide armor trim, and the Wayfinder one. But before I could make my decision, I decided to sleep on it one last time. Day 90 was finally here, and it was armor trim day. I gathered up all the trim materials and all the trims that I was interested in using, and then started the long process of selection. This took me so long. I had no idea what colors I wanted to match together, but I knew I was feeling really good about amethyst and gold. Then I went through each different template, seeing how they all looked on the armor. And I was getting overwhelmed by my decisions here, okay? I mean, I knew I could like duplicate them eventually, but I wanted to look cool. I felt like this was an impossible choice. So I went to ask the sniffers for their advice, but they were all just kind of grumbling and sniffing. So finally, I felt like I had to do the coolest armor trim that I had, and that was the silence trim. This trim only has a 1% chance to spawn, and I got lucky enough to find it, so I felt like I had to use it. I also trimmed the guard stands outside the fortress with some armor as well, since I had some extra. And now that I have this cool armor, that actually meant that all of my goals for this 100 days were completed. For all of days 91 to 93, I flattened out and smoothed this area next to my base so I could make some farm fields. On day 94, I started extending the pathway from the front of the base over to where I was going to have the fields. And I extended it all the way up to the oak and birch forest way in the back. After that, I built up a tiny little well, which I've built before in my other worlds. That way we have a full water source nearby for our plants. And from there, I just started separating out some of the land for different fields. I continued a footpath through the fields just to make sure that I would have a, a nice space to walk through. And then it was time to start tilling up the land and then to plant up our seeds, which this field was going to be beetroot. As the seeds grew, I was going to have to keep coming back and replanting as I didn't have that many beetroot seeds to begin with. And then for the rest of night 94, all the way until day 97, I completed this process once again over and over with wheat, potatoes, and carrots. To break up some of the fields a bit and make them look a little bit more interesting, I bone mealed a sapling. And of course, I planted lots of flowers in the fields like my classic sunflowers in the wheat field. Day 98, I was waiting for my crops to grow in, so I went to the zombie farm to repair my shovel and my hoe. This basically took the entire day, so once I was finally done repairing my tools, it was already nighttime again, so I decided to check my crops and see how much they'd grown in. And I was so happy with how the fields were looking and how they filled this area. I went to pick up the seeds from my sniffers, and I also took a moment to appreciate how my sniffer garden was coming in. And then I slept day 98 away. On day 99, I took the opportunity to do any last chores that were remaining around the valley. This meant getting rid of that ugly spruce tree and taking down the pink sheep's old pen. I gathered all of the grown sugar cane, and I removed the old bamboo farm. Satisfying. I stomped on the old crop field to get all of the farmland back into dirt. And I walked through the new crop fields one last time. Starting to get a little bit emotional about this world. I had to say goodbye to my sniffers. And then there was only one more thing I still wanted to do before we went to sleep on day 99. And that was name my dog. Good boy. And to name the pink sheep. It is what it is. I went into my storage room to sort a shulker box or two, but it was an absolute mess in there, and that's going to be a future frog problem. And when I re-exited, nighttime was approaching, the stars were twinkling in the sky, and it was time to go to sleep one last time in this world. And there we are! 100 days in Minecraft. What can you accomplish in 100 days in Minecraft? For me, I defeated the dragon, built up the base of my dreams, fully trimmed my armor, and got an elytra. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. And let me know if you want to see 200 days in this world. I wonder what we could accomplish in 200 Minecraft days. Thanks for watching!